these other kind of informal settlements. I mean, Squatter cities around the world are the biggest, fastest growing form of housing around the planet right now. And uh, to see, you know, the evaporation of the American economy, and, and just I'm curious if your thoughts how that kind of relates to uh, all these other places as a sort of global phenomenon. Thinking that architecture and landscape is really a, kind of a translation of capital. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on just as a global phenomenon? How, how uh, places are being demolished, places are going up, and uh, how we should plan for that in the future, and how we should, should react. Uh, I think it's a really good question. My, my um, uh, uh, Rob Numerous is going to be talking a little bit later today in, uh, 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 about some of his current work. Shadow Cities has uh, uh, shifted my thinking about um, how much I didn't know about what uh, the construction activity that's going on in the world on a very regular basis. How, um, how little architects, contractors, uh, 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 formal developers have to do with so much of that what's being built in the squatter cities and, and, the, and the informal settlements around the world. Flint, uh, when I started uh, uh, getting involved in it, uh, presents a uh, similar kind of set of issues uh, to me. Um, it's hard to, uh, very few architects know much about how to take a house apart, right? And especially uh, a house that doesn't have much obvious value or any obvious elements that, that have value. So, this, so the connection for me fundamentally is these are both areas of tremendous building activity. One where people are building thousands and thousands of their own houses every day. Another place where, where, where tens of houses are being torn down every week. And in a part of the world where more and more houses need to be taken down, where architects know nothing about this. No, don't know how to get involved in it. Don't know if our knowledge is very relevant to these kinds of settings. I, and I would imagine landscape architects are also struggling with a similar kind of issue. So, in a basic way, that's what they share. And, 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 and if someone has ideas about um, other ways that what we know conventionally as architects, what we're trained to know in school as architects, what the value of that is in the setting, I'd really like to talk to them about that. Yeah, but, but again, the notion is these are extreme environments. We're very comfortable in the middle. I think there's a sort of comfortable middle ground. These extremes offer incredible opportunity for us to both get involved and for us to learn from others who aren't trained to be architects necessarily, to really participate in their processes of building and their processes of demolishing simultaneously. Be very exciting. Okay, I think uh, in the interest of time, because we're kind of falling behind, I'm just gonna I'm gonna open it up to public questions and uh, see if we can have a little dialogue here right now. So if anybody has any questions, uh, that'd be great. I'll we'll start here with well, go, go ahead, Rob. Well, just, uh, I know it wasn't what you were commissioned to do, but what is the, uh, what does the land bank think about doing with this 5,000 parcels that it now holds and the thousands more that it apparently will hold? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's a good question. Again, um, uh, uh, I'm not sure why they don't have a physical planner on staff. So, so when you, uh, the, the taking down of the houses is totally uncoordinated from any kind of uh, systematic way. Uh, uh, the land bank doesn't even know uh, until Monday what houses of theirs are gonna be torn down that week. And they have no input really into that process at all. Uh, but still, when you talk to them about the future, uh, uh, you start to realize how the professions of planning, landscape architecture, architecture, are really reliant on growth. You know, developers' involvement. Uh, what, what are conventional planning ideas for a beautiful riverside site where General Motors had one of the largest auto-making factories in the world at one time. So the ideas become housing with terraced courtyards, and and in a way, it is, there's no basis in any kind of reality to me. So the so the ideas, so a problem is seen. You know, we're planners, we're architects. We must need housing. We must design new buildings, big buildings, um, and that becomes the model for, for imagining the future. I'm trying to go in there and, and use a different kind of language even that says shrinking, you know, sideways, drift, these can be okay things. Um, what does it mean then as um, design professionals to get involved in that kind of environment? And I'm not a banker, not a lawyer, but what would it mean to get involved from those perspectives as well? So the, so the visions they have for me are extremely conventional based on their training and their past visions of futures and growing cultures and growing societies. Uh, uh, and that's why, again, as an educator, it's a really interesting moment to get involved because 
all that we've been learning and thinking about really gets put into question suddenly. Really gets put into question. Yeah. Uh, just one thing that I think would be interesting is, as someone who grew up in a, a neighborhood that had absolutely no resemblance whatsoever to, to uh, the destruction of Flint, um, I have to imagine that as a kid, being surrounded by this many half-demolished buildings would have an interesting psychological effect, and it would be interesting. Um, I don't know if you ever talked to anyone about this, but and, and this is going to sound totally ridiculous, but if there's a high prevalence of nightmares in children, or if there's a kind of a, a high percentage of, you know, I don't know, bedtime stories about the abandoned house full of monsters or serial killers or whatever, but it just seems that this environment kind of builds a form of nightmarish kind of uh, psychological kind of terror, and uh, which would be totally alien to my own childhood, so it would be interesting to see what it would be like to actually grow up in this as a, as a kid and how that affects you psychologically. Uh, uh, great question, a uh, fun, uh, sad question. A um, couple ways to uh, maybe think about that. Um, Gary, St. Louis, Flint, Michigan, they're in, in recent years always in the top five of the most crime infested violent cities in the United States. So these are places where there's a kind there's a level of violence and activity that's that I can't imagine myself. Um, uh, as I when I uh, maybe again as Jeff Weiss was talking about in a way, the question that you asked Jeff about sort of memory and preservation and demolition, kind of how do those how do you start to tease out those tensions and those and those overlaps? Um, I went up to Flint um, imagining that the neighborhoods would be protesting, would be fighting to hold on to the fabric of the city, but uh, uh, when I was able to um, go to some of the teardown sites, I've, I've seen about six houses torn down, talked to some of the local uh, local people who come by to watch, they all want more houses torn down, you know, they want that, they want that energy to, to, to be more widespread in the city, and they and they sort of make their city assembly people um, argue for more teardowns in their particular area of the city. Um, uh, a different way to, to, to look at what you asked, uh, Brian Willingham is a, a photographer, poet, and police officer in Flint, Michigan, and he's written a great book that's titled Soul of a Black Cop that talks about, um, as, a, as a police officer, showing up at a house where there's been domestic violence uh, abuse of children, and what, what does it mean to come into a house like that and to think about the world that the children and the women and the men are growing up in. Uh, so, uh, 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 and um, that may be a sort of, uh, we have to look outside maybe of the, of the design professions to, to, to sort of find that kind of uh, insight and, and inspiration actually. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Wes.